morning, everyone. Welcome to Sister Kim's Ministries. We thank God for each and every one of you. We pray that God continues to bless and keep you. We pray that this has been a, a good week for you. Um, we thank God for, uh, again, being able to be back here today. We pray that God continue to help us to do what he's called us to do in these last and evil days. Amen. Truly, as we look up on uh, the events of uh, the last couple of weeks, the days are evil. And the things that people do are quite evil. But God is able. God is able. Amen. Amen. As we come up uh, on this uh, particular Sunday, thanking God again for uh, another Sunday to be able to serve him, we pray that he will continue to uh, move in our lives and give us the things that we need to continue to prosper, to, to live a life that will be good and pleasing before him. Because that's, that's what it's about, whether uh, we know it or not. We're not living for ourselves. We actually should be living for the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And he died for us that we might live for him. Amen. Amen. At this uh, time, I, I want to be in prayer for um, everybody in general. Specifically, the Taylor family. We are going through a season. I, I'll say it like that. Um, and I'm sure that all families do it, and the more that I listen, the more that I hear that not just the Taylor family. But as we go through this particular season, I want to encourage each and every one of us to know that God is still on the throne. God is able. God don't make mistakes. He, he, he can't do that. So, we want to learn to trust in him and not to be people who don't have hope, but be a people of hope, to trust in him and to know that everything that he does, he does it for his own particular purpose. His purpose outweighs the purposes of man, of you and me. So, put a little prayer list together and we'll just pray today and not leaving anyone out. If you feel it left out, don't feel that way. But I'm praying that God will continue to heal this land, to bring forth peace, to bring forth comfort, to bring forth the needs of his people. Amen. We're going to pray for the Simmons family. Ronald Taylor family, Pastor Corey Hines family, Catherine Taylor family. We want to pray for Riley and Robbie Homer, Vernell and Florence Williams, Margaret Taylor, Melvin and Lucinda Jones, Ruth Ella Taylor and family, and the entire Taylor family. We want to pray for Norris Neal family, the Robinson family, the Simon family, Beverly Stafford Bryan, and all my classmates and their family. Again, not leaving anyone out. If you know me, I'm praying for you. So may we bow. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We, do, we give glory and honor to your name. We thank you, Lord, for again, for giving us this, this day of, of life. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening us and giving us, Lord, uh, a mindset that is on you. We thank you for the family that you've surrounded me with, Lord, and the support factors that are around me. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them, encourage them, strengthen them in all that you've given them to, to do. And, Lord, help us always, Lord, to bring forth the purposes of God because that's what you've called us to do. Jesus came to uh, forward the kingdom of God, and that was his agenda, and it becomes our agenda to forward the kingdom of God, to keep it alive as much as possible and we pray that the word will continue to go out and we pray that people will continue to be strengthened by his word but i pray that the, the the positive parts of life would extend to each and every person that i know that we will be able to look at things and see things the way that god sees them look through the mirror and to be able to know what we're looking at and what we actually see 
to actually see reality and to know that God is still able, that God is still on the throne. No matter what's happening in our life with trials, troubles, situations, circumstances, that God is still in control. He never relinquished that control and he never will give it up. We thank God for, again, all of these families that are here, all the families that are not even mentioned. And Lord, we pray for our, our political uh, situation in the land, in this land, and, and how we become a mockery by the things that happened a couple of Wednesdays ago. We pray, Lord, that uh, law and order would, would get back into place, and Lord, that people would come back to a consciousness of you, and not just a consciousness of themselves. And to realize and know, Lord, that as long as we're forward in the purpose of God, we're getting done what you would have done in the kingdom. But when we start moving forward with our own agenda, then we begin to fall short of the glory of the agenda of the purpose in which you created us. We thank you. We, we marvel at your greatness. We thank you, Lord, and we don't question you for being God. We just, Lord, just thank you, Lord, that you have, again, allowed us to be here and allowed our name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We thank you. All glory, all praise, and honor to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 With sincerity, I, I pray for uh, these people that I mentioned and their families. And uh, we are really going through a, a, a time. And I pray again for your family that if you're going through the same thing that we're going through, God bless you all. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, I've already spent my time since we started a little late, but we're going to go on with what we have today. Let us go to the book of Job, starting at the first. Amen. 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 Uh, another te technical difficulty, but we thank God for uh, everything that is going forward. We pray that again, that we can continue to uh, do what God has called us to do. So if you did hear me before, we're going to Job 1, and we'll read 1 through 5, and act like men. And I'm going to just topic this one, uh, uh, the subtopic as, repeat the word. Amen. Just, just follow me if you would. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions also were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all the men of the East. His son used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one of his, each one of his days. And they would send and invite had three sisters to eat and drink with them. When the day of feasting had completed, the cycle of Job would send and consecrate them, rising up early in the morning and offering burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For God, for Job said, Perhaps my sons have sinned and cursed God in their heart. Thus Job did continue. Father, we ask that you would give us what to say, give us what to hear, that it Amen. We continue to thank God for all that he's doing and the many blessings that he is giving us and um, for the different things in scripture that he's uh, allowing us to see and even to bring forward. Amen. Amen. So when we talk about Job, we are, we are talking about a man that God used. We're talking about a man that the Bible says was blameless and basically that he loved God. Amen? It said he was blameless, upright, and fearing God and turning away from evil. Truly, the men of today, a lot of us, we have turned to evil. And 
a lot of us maybe unintentional, but we have put things in front of God that should not be in front of God in the, for the sake of uh, raising our families or for the sake of uh, all our own selfish agendas or whatever we are doing them for. But Job, as an example of, of, of the man that God would, would want us to be, uh, pre-law, he was before the, the law even came into place, he was doing things for his children that were honorable because he was an honorable man. Amen? And honorable men, what they do, they do honorable things. They do things not for the sake of honor, but because of that's, that's who they are. Their strength and their purpose goes forth because they love God, therefore they know how to love man. Amen. Amen. So, so when we see that Job, his lifestyle was about God, was about family, was about doing the right thing. And, and this man, again, examples for us to be able to see how a man should live. Sure, he had the possession. He, he had the riches. He, he could do certain things. But that shouldn't stop us from loving God. It shouldn't stop us from purposing the agenda of God, uh, passing on the agenda of God to our children. And like it says in Deuteronomy 6, more or less, repeat the word. God tells us that we should repeat the word. Because Job, when he, he, he birthed these offerings, he was saying, just in case my children not doing the right thing, just in case they not living a godly life, just in case they not putting God first. I'm going to consecrate, I'm going to sanctify them by sacrificing this offering to the Lord, to God, just so that they can be kept safe, just so their, their spirit can still be saved. Amen? Amen. So th this was the kind of man that we could look up to. This, this, this was a man that could mentor men to be what they needed to be to society, to their families, and to, to life in general because he was living a blameless and upright life, turning away from evil. A lot of us, what we do, we run to evil. When we see evil going on, we want to either see what's going on or we want to be included in it. Because that's the nature of a sinful man. The, the, the sinful nature that was born into us. That's how we, we do it. But the, the, the spirit that is born into us gives us an opportunity, like Job, to turn away from evil. You make a choice to do evil. You can't say my president made me do it. You can't say my boss made me do it. You can't say my wife, my husband made me do it. You make a choice to do evil. Just like you can make a choice to turn away from evil. We have to take responsibility for our own actions. We have to say to God that I put myself here, but I need you to get me out. We have to tell the truth. Why? Because the truth will set us free. Amen. Amen. So when Job does this for his children, it, it, it is like the Israel thing, again, that Moses, when he began to talk to the children, the children of Israel in in. Uh, a very familiar passage, one that I've talked about a lot, one that I will continue to talk about. Uh, 6, Deuteronomy 6, starting with verse 4, says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons and talk, and you shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontal on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and your gate. When we read this scripture, we can see why Job wanted his children basically to be like him, to be blameless, to be upright, and to turn away from evil. And so what, what Moses was saying to the children of Israel is just a principle that we can look at and take to our own lives. Because it's going to start with the man being the pastor of his own home, pastoring his wife and his children, getting them to understand that the Lord God is one. And that the Lord God is in control. That the Lord God is God. So he he, he, he was telling them how, how you should love the Lord. He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And, 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 and as I looked at this, it said when it says with all your heart, the Hebrew word is actually talking about or referring to not just the 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 the, 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 the mechanism or the, the fleshly part that actually beats and pumps blood, but basically about the whole human person, about the 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 uh, the, the emotions, the intellect that make us who we are. When you we talk about the heart, so we should be about God. You, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. In order for you to teach this, you have to do this. You have to be this. And our culture, our society has fallen. Because men will not stand up and love God. And because they will not stand up and love God, they, they can't teach their children to love God. And because they can't do that, their children won't be able to teach their children to love God. But what Moses is telling them today is they need to repeat the word. He was telling the, the men of Israel, you, you, you tell your children, you put all these signs around your house. You talk to them as y'all sit at the table. You do all of this with, with your children. So God is forever put forth in their mind. Everything that they see that is happening is about God and not about themselves. Not about uh, CNN, not about uh, the CBS news, not about all the other news, the different things, the news reports that are given, but about God. Because when you, when you put God first, God is where he needs to be in your life. And then your life moves down from that. Because you got God first and you teach it to your children, the most likely outcome is that your children are going to love God too. Not, not saying everybody does that. I'm, I'm just saying the most likely outcome is that they're going to love God because that's what they've been taught to do. And after being taught that, they can just actually do it on their own. Not because they've been taught it, but because God is good. Amen? So, so he said, he said, these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. If they're on your heart, you can express them to your children. But if they're not on your heart or in your heart, it's going to be hard for you to articulate what they need to do with God in their own life. They won't be able to understand the, the, the importance of God unless you're showing them God in your own life. They, 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 when, when they see you, they can see how you act so they can see how God is, is, is uh, moving in your life. And, and then you can have a little boy say, I want to be like daddy instead of I want to be like Mike or I want to be like the local rich drug dealer or the uh, other person
person down the street that's doing something that they might want to do, or some uh, sexually immoral person or something, instead of being this type of person, they can say, I want to be like my daddy because my daddy is blameless, upright, and he fears the Lord. He loves the Lord. He turns away from evil. If my dad does this, I can do this too. I want to do this because my dad does this. Be somebody that your children will want to emulate. He says, these words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall what? Teach them. When I say teach them, instruct them. But it's hard to teach somebody something you don't know. You can Google it and tell them to Google it too so that they can maybe become informed. But if you actually can teach them and teach them from experience, your own experience with God, you things will work out better. Because you, you, you look at this situation and you see that this, this that, that Moses is telling them that you shall teach them diligently. And the men of Israel were taught, they were taught these things. So they were easily be able to, amen, amen. Y'all interrupted. Something's going on with the server. We pray that God will continue to uh, help us to get through this. Amen, amen. As we continue talking about how fathers should teach their children to love God with all their heart, is the perfect example is the father showing that he loves God with all of his heart. He, he, he said, you shall bind them as signs on your hand, and they shall be as bracelets on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your, your house and on your gate. So in, in Israel, they, they had doorposts, like, you know, we, we remember where they, they put the blood and different things like that. But it, it, it was places where they could place little uh, notes and things on, on their doorposts so that they, they could be seen. It, it, it's, it's different things that, that can be done even today because, you know, we have all these different uh, uh, signages that, that use scripture now to where if we don't even post posting notes in our own house, we can buy these things that look like pictures. We can put them up in our, our houses so that when the children uh, walk through the house, they can, they can, they can see John 3.16 that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We, we can see that little scriptures that talk about how uh, 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 God loves us and how he, 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 he commands us to love one another. We, we can post things in our house about how we should love God and how, how we should love man, how should we, we should treat one another, how even uh, the Ten Commandments uh, on, on two tablets and how the Ten Commandments are wrote in English and, and actually put on there so that it can be read by us English-speaking people. But it, it's certain things that we can put in our house. I, I have a few in my own house. I, I just don't have posters of, of, of movies posted in, in, in my theater room, but I also have other things posted in my house to remind us of, of who we serve, of, of who we are about. I, 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 I had Bibles in certain places in my house, so that in case somebody wanted to pick up one, they, they could read them. I don't have them like that anymore because, again, a, a lot of that got taken away in the fire, but uh, they could be easily replaced. But, but, I, but I hadn't done that yet. But when, when, when you think about how, how men can take the example and, and be what God calls them to be, to be all that they can be in God, they, they, can, they can do so much because the next generation depends on it. And then the generation after that depends on it. And the next generation depends on it. It's up to you now, if you're in a cycle to where God is not Lord of your own home, you can make the choice today to change that. You can say, oh, my wife won't let me. Act like men. Be the man of your home and like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we are going to 
serve the Lord. And that's what we want to be about. That's the kind of men we want to be. We want to act like men. We want to lead like men. We want to lead like Job. 